All right, I'm going to show you the difference between these water pumps. Ronnie's about to install the SS Camaro water pump on this LS3 engine. This is the Corvette pump that we're taking off, and you can see that the Corvette pump and the Camaro SS pump are almost the same pump other than the height. And you can see that the Camaro SS pump and the truck pump are about the same height. But look at the outlets for the coolant hose. You notice the truck's on top and the Camaro's off center to the driver's side. So you can run either one of these pumps depending on whether you have a high intake or a low intake. The LS3 will, will run this pump and the trucks will run this pump. Let's take a quick look here at the purge valve which Ronnie is plumbing. You will notice that he took this the purge hose off. Uh, this is the source or the vacuum line to the purge valve. We've relocated the purge valve to the driver's side fuel rail and Ronnie has now plumbed it directly to the throttle body for vacuum. The purge side is actually going to connect to this fitting here and go back to the vapor canister and this white vacuum tee is going to be used for uh, an auxiliary circuit which I'll show you guys later. Alright guys here we are with our LS3 430 horsepower crate engine. I'm going to cover a lot of things in this video so you might have to pause it or rewind. Now we've installed our SS Camaro 6.2 water pump on this crate engine. This, this had a Corvette water pump on it. And we're going to talk a little bit about the variable valve timing and air fuel management. This, this engine is an LS3, which means it originally was intended for manual transmission. It did not have AFM, DOD, which is the four cylinder mode, and it does not have VVT or variable valve timing. The variable valve timing in the Gen 4 engines is basically on off and it uses a solenoid. Now the Gen 4 engines run the VVT solenoid and the cam sensor in the timing cover. Here's our cam sensor, this three wire sensor. If this was a VVT motor there would be a two pin plug right here for the solenoid. So we know this is not a VVT motor. Now the L99 which is the automatic version of the LS3 does have VVT and AFM. If this engine were to have AFM There would be a five pin connector here on the lifter manifold assembly right next to the oil pressure switch. So we know this is a non-VVT, uh, a non-AFM engine. Now, there seems to be a lot of questions about how to hook up the cam sensor. GM installs this harness with the non-VVT engines. You'll see there's a three pin connector that goes into your cam sensor and the other side has a three pin connector to go to the engine harness. Problem is GM doesn't have a three pin connector on the engine harness. GM has a five pin connector and this five pin connector won't fit in this three pin connector. So what does GM do? All the E-Rod motors and non-VVT motors now run this adapter. So you can get this harness from GM, this three to five pin adapter, plug that into your engine harness side and that into your cam sensor. Now that's kind of sloppy in our opinion, <clears throat> so what we do is cut the cam sensor out of this, throw this away, we're going to then cut three wires off here, actually all five. We're going to tuck the two cam solenoid wires up and then connect the other three in where they belong and we can give you a pinout for that and uh, you're not going to have any connectors. Basically this is just going to be your harness. So that, that's how I suggest you do the LS3 three pin cam sensor connectors without VVT. Let's walk over quickly to the other shop so I can show you the VVT solenoid and AFM connector. Alright, 
This is an L94, which is a 6.2 liter truck engine. Actually came out of an Escalade, 2013. Here is our engine harness that GM supplies on these engines. You can't see it, but that is a five pin connector on the bottom that plugs directly into our harness. And it is five wires. There's our cam sensor. And here's our additional VVT connector that I told you about. Make sure that you have all these hooked up before you put the balancer on. Now, if you look in the back of this engine, here's our oil pressure sensor. And there's our flat five pin VVT connector. And it's the same pretty much in all these Gen 4 engines. Here's a 5.3. Alright, so back to our LS3. Now we are going to replace the balancer, at least in the current versions of our kit, we're going to replace the balancer and I'm going to kind of go over that with you. This happens to be the Corvette balancer, but the truck balancer is very similar, it's just a little bit taller. Uh, to pull these balancers off, this is a tool I suggest you use. And you'll notice it has a long rod. Those rods are interchangeable. OTC and others offer this tool. So get the proper tool. Don't try to, don't try to get around it. Um, the hard part really is putting it back on. And these are dry seals in these LSs. So I don't suggest you lube them up um, when you put the balancer on. They're designed to be dry. This is the tool we're going to use to install it. Now this tool is not easy to get. That's a metric thread. So we actually made our tool. We've made a couple of these. And let me show you what we've done. This is an original balancer bolt like this. We've cut it off and we welded it on to a, to a basic uh, harmonic balancer installer tool. And as long as you don't abuse it, it holds up pretty good. Make sure you use a balancer tool with a bearing on it and a heavy washer. Uh, don't try to run it down with a stud and a, and a washer because these LS balancers are not pinned. What that means is there is no keyway like the small block and big block Chevys. These, <coughs> excuse me, these balancers depend on a friction fit to not spin. Now, in the old days, we used to run some of the aftermarket balancers like Dorman's, but they were spinning on us on the high performance engines. So now we only use OE GM balancers and we haven't had any problem. Uh, you do need to really tighten these well. Don't, don't neglect that. If you have to have somebody hold the flywheel for you, go ahead and go ahead and do that. So you're going to put the balancer on, you're going to run it down with your installer tool. And when you get it down near the bottom, you can take the installer tool off try to run a new a new bolt. GM recommends you put a new bolt on. They're about five bucks at the dealer. They're not very much when you replace the balancer. It is a stretch bolt. So let's let's hope you understand now how the cam sensor, cam solenoid, AFM connector work. Let's look now. Ronnie took the purge valve off the front of this head and he has relocated it here onto the fuel rail. Notice how he ran this 3 8 vacuum line to the purge valve. This side of the purge valve is going to go straight back into the purge canister uh, on your fuel tank. And this T here is going to be used for an air conditioning function later on that we'll, we'll talk about. So we're going to put the accessories and the transmission on this engine. This engine did ship with the correct flywheel, so we're going to be able to use it. We just got a pallet in of six new transmissions, so we'll hopefully have those on uh, later today or tomorrow. Thank you.